TLO, what's pop? We are on kick, K I C K dot com. We are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. If we do have, if we do go live right above me, man, it's the channel. You can catch any of the highlights and things of that nature on. Don't forget, we do got merch. You get me. Um, and we also got the Patreon. We post five days a week. We just posted season three, episode one of uh, Fresh Meat. I think I'm going to like this season the best, actually, man. September 7th, man. We're definitely starting um, Top Boy. Anyway, this is disturbing. Hit that like button, man. Um, you know, we watch this. It's very disturbing, obviously, a lot of these cases. Um, this one is called, This Murderer Went on a Disturbing Rampage. This is definitely in the UK, so let's watch, man. Got to get myself together before we watch this crazy stuff. Is seen here in the early stages. Is seen here in the early stages of his 45-minute rampage. Just walking around this mug like Jason. And this case takes place in the United Kingdom on the 4th of September, 2014. Palmyra Silva was born in southern Italy in 1932. In the 1950s, she left her homeland and moved to London, seeking opportunities and a new beginning. She took up a job as a nanny, and she eventually met a man by the name of Domenico, who had separately immigrated from Italy too. The couple Domenico, that sounds like demon. grew closer, and they began a relationship. They saved every penny they could to establish their own businesses. This dream took form in a succession of cafes and snack bars that they ran in various parts of the city. While the businesses became a focal point in their lives, Paul. What's Domenico mean? I'm curious now. It also sounds like Dominique and Dominican. Mira's true pride and joy was in her family. She and her husband Domenico had two children together and Palmyra was a devoted mother and grandmother. But tragically in 2008, Domenico passed away. R.I.P. Domenico. Yet in the face of this loss, Palmyra remained strong. She and her son continued to nurture the family business, Silver's Cafe in Edmonton. As time passed, her family expanded to include six grandchildren and a great-grandchild. Oh, it's Edmonton. Y'all gotta protect y'all, you know what I'm saying? Protect. However, the family would soon suffer a tragic loss. Just a week after returning home from a family holiday in Italy, 82-year-old Palmyra's life was brutally cut short. On the 4th of September 2014, in the final hours before the tragic events unfolded, a sense of unease seemed to linger around 25-year-old Nicholas Salvador. Nicholas was somewhat of a troubled individual. He was a cage fighter and fought under the alias of Fat Nick. He also had a regular job, but three days before, he had been fired. Anyway, on the 14th, Nicholas visited a local cafe. He ordered a meal, ate it, and left without paying. A member of staff realized and pursued him. They successfully got him to pay the bill. However, the worker at this cafe would later recall that Nicholas seemed to be somewhat depressed and was acting strange. At the time, Nicholas was living with a friend. He returned to this friend's house, and once there, he retrieved a large knife and a wooden pole. The friend he was living with had two cats. Nicholas took this knife and decapitated both of the animals. He would later say that he What the cats do though? Remember that drill song? Your mom, your dad, your cats, your fish. Like, what the cats do ever? Cats would just be chilling by the, you know what? He believed them to be demons. Following this, Nicholas left the house. 
He went through the back gardens and houses, leaving behind a trail of devastation. He destroyed and climbed over a number of fences before reaching Palmyra's home. Palmyra was in her own garden when Nicholas jumped the fence. He walked towards the defenseless elderly woman and grabbed her. Nicholas stabbed Palmyra a number of times. He then used the large blade to behead her, leaving her behind in a pool of her own blood. Palmyra died from multiple stab wounds at the scene. It's reported that she would not have been alive when she was decapitated. The brutality continued as Nicholas fled through the gardens, leaving torn fences in his wake, while law enforcement worked urgently to protect nearby residents from the unfolding terror. In a desperate confrontation with- He took Palmyra's top off? Bro, something was clearly mentally wrong with this dude. He just snapped. He hit that boiling point. Armed officers, Nicholas's rampage finally came to an end. Yeah, they had to unalive this guy, didn't they? After he was tased six times. After the 45-minute rampage, Nicholas was arrested. You know how many... I'm not even gonna lie to you. If this was happening in America... Bro would have never seen another day. He would have never seen another day. They would have put 45 9 millimeter slugs in Buddy. The UK difference. Six time tasering. Wake of the horrific attack, the community stood united in shock and disbelief. As the aftermath of the rampage settles, Questions hung heavy in the air. What kind of person would commit such senseless violence Heinous. on an innocent and beloved woman? Nicolas Salvador's story is one marked by a series of red flags that signaled his descent into darkness. As an only child, his parents brought him to the United Kingdom from Nigeria, but he left home when he was around 13. He reportedly felt unloved for much of his life, and he rarely smiled never had any money or a girlfriend, and during the time of the killing, he was unemployed. In the lead up to the disturbing rampage, he was a L-O-S-E-R. You know what I'm saying? That's that, 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 like, be for real. Like, that's what we just all heard. I'm just saying it out loud. That's what we all heard. And I don't like to say that word, but like, from what he did, like, oh well, I don't have no sympathy his friends had noticed he had developed a disturbing obsession. A fixation with videos depicting beheadings. For weeks, he immersed himself in extreme and macabre content. How do people even watch that? Like, I seen that one cartel video. Like, after that, I was like, I ain't never watching this again. This fascination with extreme gore seemed to captivate his mind. Nicholas's association with religion added another layer of complexity to his already troubled mind. In 2012, he converted to Islam, but seemed to gravitate towards the more extremist side. He would spend hours on the internet, watching jihadi videos and watching their propaganda. Although in 2014, he converted to Buddhism. In the Ain't Buddhism peaceful? midst of this dark obsession with gore, Nicholas's life was in a state of turmoil. He lost his job as a billboard worker, a blow that seemed to further push him to the edge. Those who knew Nicholas stated that he would frequently consume whole bottles of hard spirits and take large amounts of illegal substances. The signs of Nicholas's impending violence were alarmingly clear to Just mentally unstable. Then he drank, drank heavily, and did class A's. That ain't doing nothing but adding fuel to the fire. Those who knew him best. Between the frequent use of intoxicants, his fascination with violence, and the extremist religious beliefs, friends had feared that he would eventually snap. Following Nicholas's arrest, it be- Like, as a friend, what do you do in this situation? Like, do what do you do? Can, who do you call? I wouldn't even know who to call if I seen this going on. Because the police going to be like, did he commit a crime? No, okay, call back when he does. That's the reality of it. It's sad, but they want you to fully break, and then you can call them for help. 
Like, like, where do you go? Like, what do you, who do you call right now at this stage? It became clear to the authorities that he was suffering from serious mental health issues. His words, echoing with delusion, painted a stark picture of his fractured reality. His delusions had reportedly included viewing Palmyra as an otherworldly entity. He told mental health workers that he believed that Palmyra was a reincarnation of Hitler and said that he needed to kill her because of this. Nicholas was charged with murder and the trial would soon begin. Hey, solar companies, come here. Uh, black t-shirts, black tracksuit bottoms. Nicholas Salvador, a paranoid schizophrenic, is seen here in the early stages of his 45-minute rampage. Armed with a large knife and a wooden pole, he has already killed two cats. The cage fighter vaults the garden fences with ease. Athletic. Then he tries to attack the passengers in a car, but they escape. Now looks like he's got serious mental health issues. Moments later, in her garden, he had a brief exchange with 82-year-old Palmyra Silva. Salvador repeatedly stabbed her, then beheaded her. The destruction continued outside, as officers feared Salvador was about to come into contact with others. We do have children in these back gardens. Back gardens. He eventually stepped inside a house as the police ushered others to safety. Boy, if this has been in Chicago, he would have been blicked. I ain't even gonna lie to you. I don't condone it, but this situation, like, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, concealed carry, amendments, constitution, you breaking in people's houses. Oh, no. 300. The inspector you could hear just then says the incident was simply terrifying. It was definite rage. There was. Uh, sheer anger, his eyes were absolutely wide. He wasn't speaking to me, but I, I could see that he was enraged. And you know, I, I was scared because I, I was fully aware of what he'd done before. Uh, and and he, he was definitely enraged. Yeah. Cafe owner Mrs. Silver was well known in Edmonton as kind and chatty. See, I thought she got taken out in the shop. Y'all couldn't have done nothing about that. This is at her own house in the backyard. RIP. One of her granddaughters has described how she heard that horrific news last September. No, no, the whole world knew before I knew. It really upset me. That's how that goes normally. So you get yourself home. With M's. And I don't know, you don't even know how to comprehend what's happened. And you still, to this day, you think, you know, it's a big nightmare. And you think you're going to wake up and everything's going to be absolutely fine. In the courtroom, the truth of Nicholas's condition was uncovered. Expert opinions concluded that paranoid schizophrenia had driven him to commit yeah. the unspeakable acts. Jurors watched footage from the police helicopter, capturing Nicholas shirtless and armed, vaulting over garden fences in the vicinity of Palmyra's home. However, the gruesome crime scene images were not shown to the jury. When speaking to Nicholas, the judge said, it has been established beyond any reason. So what did he get to go to a psychiatric ward? Reasonable doubt that you killed Miss Silver in an attack of extraordinary brutality and ferocity. You thought you were encountering some demonic force which had taken human form. You could have not been more deluded. This gentle 82 year old lady should have been able to live her life in peace and security. But sadly, that was not to be. The jury's verdict echoed the grim diagnosis made by experts, finding Nicholas not guilty of murder by reason of insanity. So crazy people could just... <laughs> I understand, like, it's a mental de deficiency, but that doesn't... I don't know. I, that's a tough, like... That's a, like, slippery slope to get into, man. I wonder how the family feel about that verdict. Are we, are we going to find out? He was ordered to receive treatment at Broadmoor High Security Hospital, confined in a high security psychiatric hospital. The out. But you know, they can never let him, like, they have the power to never let him out of there. <laughs> 
outcome was unfavourable for Palmyra's family. Her daughter spoke of the profound impact of her mother's tragic murder and the way it inflicted their lives. She said, We as a family no longer feel safe and feel really insecure, drained and have to work hard just to focus. A few of us here are having regular counselling to help us come to terms with what has happened, but nothing is the same. A lot of joy in everyday things has now gone. While experts assert that this killing was the result of Nicholas's deteriorating mental health, the public and press have speculated whether or not it had anything to do with the extremist organisations that Nicholas enjoyed watching online. Though some be that fueled it for sure. believe that these comparisons were more about politicising a tragedy. Horrifically, Palmyra was the third woman in London to be beheaded that year. And some have said that her murder highlights the need for mental health to be taken more seriously. As That's... of right now, Nicholas has been receiving treatment at Broadmoor Psychiatric Hospital in Berkshire and will remain at that institution indefinitely. Forever. It definitely sound like forever. You'll definitely be in there forever. TLL, leave your like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. That was definitely disturbing. RIP.